From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with his special guest, Johnny Carson, presented by Lucky Strike. Light up the lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up the lucky strike. Relax, it's light up time. There's a time and a place for everything. And the right time for a lucky is any time you want to enjoy a great cigarette. And the right place for a Lucky is wherever you happen to be at the time. You'll always enjoy Lucky's because Lucky's taste better. Lucky Strike is made of fine, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And it's toasted to taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, sir, Lucky's taste better. Anytime, anywhere. So right now, light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Enjoy the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Now, if my voice should give out any time during the show, that's because yesterday I went to the Coliseum to see the USC-UCLA football game. And that was really exciting. I mean, there was such a crowd there, such excitement, and the betting that went on. And there was everybody was making bets, you know. I lost $3 myself. <laughs> there was a pickpocket in the crowd. <laughs> he got me as I was coming through the tunnel. <laughs> but not only that, I must tell you what else happened. Finally, the usher took me to my seat. And out of a hundred thousand people, who do you think I was sitting next to? Dennis Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed. That kid drives me nuts, really. You know, he was supposed to be on my show today, but I, after what he did to me yesterday, I just couldn't take another half hour of it. You know, well, I'll, I'll tell you, the game had just got started, and Dennis handed me a hot dog. So I said, thank you, Dennis. I took a bite out of it, and the fellow sitting on the other side of me punched me in the nose. <laughs> Dennis didn't tell me I was supposed to pass it. <laughs> Finally, the gun went off. And Dennis says, goodbye, Mr. Benny. I'll see you tomorrow. Be careful driving home. I said, I will, Dennis. I rushed out to beat the crowd, got in my car, and I was almost in Beverly Hills before I realized that the gunshot was only the end of the first half. <laughs> you know why I can't have him around me, because he just... However, ladies and gentlemen, uh, during rehearsal one day this week, I was coming in, and there's a young fella here who does his own show for CBS. And his name is Johnny Carson. Now, as a rule, I do not rave about other comedians. But this fellow has everything it takes to become a great success. And he's so young, too. It's <laughs> frightening. <laughs> anyway, I asked him, I said, Johnny, as long as you're around here and you're rehearsing, would you mind coming on? Because I love his work. Would you mind coming on, just saying hello to the folks in a few words? And here he is, Johnny Carson. Johnny, I was just telling my audience how much I enjoy your work, and uh, I think, in my opinion, you're going to be one of the real, real great comedians. Well, thank you, Mr. Benny. You know, coming from you, that's a wonderful compliment. It means a lot. Because, you know, for years, you've been my idol. Really? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, remember, I remember when you were in vaudeville, I used to save up, you know, pennies just so I could go down and watch your work. I'd sit up for hours in the gallery and... I admire the way that you'd hold the audience right in the palm of your hand, every minute. Yeah. And uh, I'd go home at night and even lie awake and wish that I could grow up to be just like you, Mr. Benny. Well, you can call me Jack. 
Thank you, Jack. And even when I watch you on television today, during your own shows, I, I know that I'm watching a genius, a master at work. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, <laughs> really, now, now that's a, a little bit embarrassing. Well, then I won't go on. Oh, no. <laughs> you can go on. You know, you're my guest. You can say whatever you like. <laughs> Jack, I'll wait and tell you later when we're together. All right. You know, Johnny, I meant to ask you one thing uh, during rehearsal. How long have you been in show business? Two years. Two years. Gosh, that's amazing. I've been in it practically all my life. Well, you're certainly doing a wonderful job. Well, thank you, Jack. And I want to tell you that I never miss one of your television shows. You watch all of them? Every single one of them. Well, isn't that nice? And Jack... Mm-hmm. Jack... Yes? Would you mind if I made a few little suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the nature of constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You don't mind, do you? No, no, I think constructive criticism is good for everybody. You know. How long do you say you were in show business? Two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Johnny, what are, what are some of these criticisms? Well, for one thing, Jack, and I'm sure this can easily be corrected. Well, good, good. <laughs> one thing I noticed is your pace seems to be, oh, a little off or something, not quite right. Mm -hmm. It seems, the uh, pacing seems uh, a little slow. You mean you don't like my timing? Huh? Well, let me put it this way, Jack. It's all right to be slow. Mm -hmm. But you're sort of a lazy Perry Como. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, comments like that, if they can further my career. And how long were you in show business? Two years. <laughs> Not two years and six months, or two years and three months. Just two years. Two years. <laughs> well, Johnny. Now another question. Oh, is there more? Yes. <laughs> Jack, I'm kind of concerned with that that long take you do at the audience. You mean you don't like that after I tell a joke, the way I stare at the audience? Uh -huh. No. I always have the feeling that you're surprised they're still there. <laughs> Fortunately, that also can be easily corrected. Oh, well, that's fine, then. <laughs> well, if you're through now... Well, there is one more thing. Well, then tell me. Tell me. I mean, don't keep anything away from your idol. <laughs> Out with it. Well, as long as I'm being constructive, Jack, this I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not, you know, you may not realize this, yeah. but every move you make, your, your delivery, every little inflection that you have is exactly the way I work and I don't think it's fair. <laughs> See, you're staring again. <laughs> now listen to me, Mr. Carson. Call me Johnny. I'll call you anything. <laughs> You've got a lot of nerve saying that I'm stealing your style. Everything I've done, show, I've done since I started in show business. For 22 years. <laughs> And if I were going to copy anybody, it wouldn't be an unfunny, untalented upstart like you. Well, now cut that out. <laughs> Johnny Carson, I came out here at the start of my show, didn't I? Yeah. Telling the audience what I thought of you, how wonderful now, you Now, Jack, are. Jack, wait a minute. Wait just a second. Remember when you asked me to be on your show? Yeah. You were the one who told me to do this routine so we could get some laughs. Oh. I suggested that you insult When you called me two weeks ago, remember? Oh, my goodness, I did. Oh, Johnny, I'm terribly sorry, really. I, but I don't know, you were so good, I, I thought you meant it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he good? <laughs> I thought he was. Oh, Johnny. Well, well, now that you were kind enough to come on my show, I'd like to have you do something by yourself. Oh, that'd be fine, Jack. Maybe, like maybe I could tell a little joke or something? Oh, fine. And, Johnny, I yes. want to say one more thing to you. You yes, just sir. keep on improving the way you are. You're a very young fella, and it won't be long before you will have your picture on the cover of TV Guide, like mine was on this week. <laughs> mine was on eight weeks ago. Actually, ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy, you know, that Jack invited me on his show down here. And, you know, uh, this little routine we just did was kidding, you know, of course. Because even though I've uh, admired Jack for, for years, we worked nothing alike at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack, uh, I will say this, I have to tell you, you know, Jack's eyes, Jack's eyes are a little bluer than mine. And so is his age. <laughs> but anyway, what I wanted to tell well, Jack, you is this. Jack, the oh, Jack, before you go any further. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, I didn't know it was you. I thought Jack Benny was still Don't here. I confuse you two? Oh, Johnny, you certainly did. But Johnny, you know, I must tell you the most exciting thing happened this morning. Gee, it just, just thrilled me to death. Well, tell me, Don, tell me. What is it? Well, what? Johnny, uh... There was a long line of people lined up in front of a cigarette machine. Oh, there must have been, oh, 40 or 50 people there. Yeah. And everybody who put money in that cigarette machine bought a package of Lucky Strike. No. Yes, Johnny, <laughs> yes. And then you know what I did, Johnny? I went around and I asked each one of them individually why they smoked Lucky Strike. And every one of them said it's because Luckies are toasted to taste better. And Luckies are cleaner and fresher and smoother. I know, I know. And not only that, Johnny, but Luckies are round firm and fully packed and free and easy on the draw. Good, good. <laughs> is, that, is that all, Don? Yeah, yeah, Johnny, that's well, all. Well, Don, seriously, now, I do want to ask you one question. How long have you been working for Jack? Well, now, let's see, Johnny. Uh, I've been with Jack since 1934. 1934? Yeah. Gee, whiz. And Jack's been paying you for? Two years. <laughs> oh, 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 two. Let's go, Don. All right. <laughs> Come from the studio, yes. Oh, he has it? No, and I've got his dinner already. Well, I'm sure he won't be long. Yeah, I hope not. I don't want his Chateau Briand to get too well done. <laughs> well, so Mr. Benny's going to have steak. No, hamburgers. <laughs> but, Rochester, you said Chateau Briand, and Briand means steak. Not in this Chateau. <laughs> Is there any message, Mr. Wilson? No, no, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. Gee, it's nine o'clock. He's never been this late before. I'd better go turn down the fire on it. Rochester, somebody's after me. Oh, boy, you made that picture 12 years ago. Rochester, <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I decided to walk back from the studio. It was getting dark. I turned back and there was a fella with his overcoat collar turned up. I think he was following me. How do you know he was following you? How do I know? Every time I looked back, he hid behind a tree, then he hid behind a bush. I even went down a dark alley. I still couldn't look. Look, boss, you're getting yourself all worked up over nothing. Oh. You know, at night time, your imagination plays tricks with you. What you saw was just shadows. Shadows? Mm -hmm. It could be my imagination. But I don't know, why would anybody want to hurt me? I'm such a sweet guy. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think so, Rochester? Uh-huh, and you're modest, you're kind, and you're considerate. And I'm generous. There goes your imagination again. <laughs> Come on, boss, I've got your dinner already. Sit down, please. Okay. Funny, Rochester, I should get all upset over it. 
Nothing, I don't know. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. I guess not. I'll turn the lights back on. Okay. Get a little bright around here. Yeah. Everything's gonna be all right. I hope so. <laughs> that was a wreck. And while you're having your soup du jour, I'll go get your Chateau Briand. Thank you, Pierre. Eat pot of guam du jour. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine my getting all worked up just over maybe some shadows. That's all they were, shadows. <laughs> <laughs> I thought somebody was following me. I'll get a rock, sir. Can it be the breeze and the sea? Hello? 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 Just asked for the phone. The fellow was on the other end, hung up. How do you know they hung up? How do I know? I, I, I could hear the click. I distinctly heard the sound of a click. Maybe they were using a, uh, a phone booth and the sound you heard was the dropping of a dime. Dropping of a dime? I've known that sound since I was two years old. <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't get yourself all worked up. I'll go get you a sedative. All right. See if I... I mean, if I, if I only knew why they were following me. Only knew what they wanted. Right! <laughs> oh, a rock in the wind. There's a note on it. Get out of town before it's too late. <laughs> Get out of town. Just a note, no ticket. <laughs> Operator, 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 hurry. Number, please. Operator, look at uh, this is an emergency. Get me the police. One moment, please. One moment, please. One moment, please. It's always one moment. Beverly Hills Police Department. Oh, oh, officer, look at my life is in danger. Officer, I'm at 366 North Camden Drive. Rush right over. Will you? 366 North Camden Drive. Yes. Who is this? Jack Benny. Gee, you sound just like Johnny Carson. <laughs> I don't care what I sound. Like. Now get over here. I'm going to worry about Johnny Carson now. Let's see. Rochester, I thought you were going to get me a sedative. What took you so long? Well, when I opened the medicine cabinet, there were two boxes with no labels on it. So to tell which pill was which, I took one of them. Well, could you tell which was the sedative? I must have. I fell asleep. <laughs> right, this is no time for jokes, Rochester. I'm in danger. I just called the police. Why aren't they here? Look, boss, boss, I'll fix you a drink. I'll fix my own drink. <laughs> there's another rock. Right there. Oh, there's another one, too. Well, read it to me. <laughs> you have been told to get out of town. You now have 30 seconds to think it over. 30 seconds to think it over. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop it. Stop it. The music. What lies? What music? There goes your imagination again. It's not my. You just read the note, didn't you? To Rochester, I'm telling you, somebody is after me. I know they are. Here come the police. The police are coming. The police. The police are coming. the prowler outside, Mr. Benny. You did? My men will bring him in so you can make a formal complaint. Well, well hold him tight, will you? I know, I, I know, I know he's out to kill me. All right, we got him under control. Yeah. Bring him in, boys. Mr. Benny. <laughs> you were the one that's been following me? Uh-huh. Making me a nervous wreck? Uh-huh. 
Dennis, why would you do this to me? Because you wouldn't put me on your show today. Uh, is that an excuse for following me down dark alleys? For, for making a wreck out of me? Oh, boy, if I'd only known it was you. Well, I didn't want you to know it was me. That's why I always stayed a half a block away. Half a block away? I could feel you breathing down the back of my neck. I know. You know? How could you breathe if you were a half a block away down my neck? I had a long straw. <laughs> now, stop! <laughs> Take him along with us, Mr. Benny. Huh? Shall we take him along with us? No, leave him here. Leave him here? Yeah. Gee, thanks, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Come on, boy. I don't know, Dennis. Boy, what you did to me today. I don't know. For years I've been lecturing to you. For years I've been talking to you. And I don't know. Nothing seems to help. Well, there's only one thing I can do. Rochester. Coming up! <laughs> All right, Dennis, take off your coat. <laughs> Come on, take off your coat. <laughs> take off the other one. Come here. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Light up the lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the teeth that you like, light up the lucky strike. We like. It's light up time. It's the end of a perfect date when you stop for a light snack and linger with your luckies. Why luckies? Well, that's easy. Luckies taste better. Naturally, they do. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then this fine, good-tasting tobacco is toasted. It's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. So next time you want to linger, light up a Lucky. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light up time. You're really a silly kid, but I must say you put it over on me today. Uh, did I really? You certainly did. Gosh, I don't know. I walking home in the dark like that, I, I, I don't know. I was frightened. I had such an eerie feeling. You know. <laughs> what was that, Mr. Benny? I said, walking home, I had such an eerie feeling. Gee, that's the place where I was born. <laughs> eerie, Pennsylvania. No, feeling West Virginia. <laughs> Dennis, the reason you raised such a devil because you wanted to be on my show, mm -hmm. I nearly said something else, but the reason you... I, I'm nervous at the end of the show, you know. Dennis, you wanted to sing a song, is that right? That's right. You wanted to sing? Yes. All right, I'm sure they got... a song that was written by Sammy Kahn. It's called Love and Marriage. You know, you know uh, Mr. Benny, just to prove to you that my feelings weren't hurt, I wrote a special lyric, you know, on the second chorus, and it's all about you. Oh, the second chorus, Love and Marriage, dedicated to me. That's right. Oh, oh that's sweet. That's okay, sweet. Malin. Huh? Love and marriage, love and marriage. Go together like a horse and carriage. They so tell your brother. You can't have one without the other. Love and marriage, love and marriage. It's an institute you can't disparage. At the local gantry, and they will say it's elementary. 
try, try to separate them. It's an illusion. Try, try, and you will only come to this conclusion. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. Dad was told by mother, you can't have one. You can't have none. You can't have one without the other. Oh, uh, this is the, uh, the second chorus. Uh, the one about me? About, yeah. oh, come on. I want you to hear it. Yeah. Jack and money, Jack and money. <laughs> go together like a bee and honey. This I'll tell you quickly. The thought of spending makes them sickly. <laughs> Jack and money, nice song about Jack me. and money, go together just like him <laughs> and Ronnie. You think that he'd be wiser instead of acting like a miser. <laughs> try, try to get a raise from him. It's like magic. Would he? Fire me instead. I would. You see, it's tragic. Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. I won't ask you for another penny. I'm an am -am brother. <laughs> I can't have one. I can't. No, no, we got to go. I had one line in the whole song and I forgot it. <laughs> All it was, let me tell you, brother. Forgot the whole line. <laughs> oh, well. That comes from doing so much radio, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to thank Johnny Carson so much for being on the show. Johnny, come out and take a bow, will you? Gentlemen, incidentally, he does his own show on Thursday night on the same network. I'll be back with you two weeks from tonight. <laughs> There's a note on it. Oh, yes. Be sure and watch Ann Southern next Sunday. <laughs> Thank you, and a happy Thanksgiving. tonight's program were Kim Dibbs and Chucky Bradley. Remember, one week from tonight on this same station, be sure to watch Ann Southern in Private Secretary. Jack Benny's next television show will be in two weeks.